My name is Giulia Ranzini, I am Drinking Cider, and the topic of today is uh, online dating. Okay, so first of all, I'd like you to think about what it was like to be single and looking for a partner around 1998. How did people even find each other back then? So, of course, there were single bars, there were uh, friends of friends, acquaintances, family, um, uh, and then book clubs or church or any other kind of social activity, just like today. And then, of course, there were the original dating sites, which at the time were not much more than a more technological version of those matchmaking VHSs that people exchanged <laughs> with each other. Now, public perception of online dating um, at the time was uh, extremely stigmatized. The idea being that um, you met someone online if you couldn't uh, find someone more traditionally, if you had a hard time in the traditional dating world. Uh, even just a decade later, um, online dating had a different um, uh, type of appeal, but it wasn't until um, online dating started being uh, possible on our phones through mobile dating apps that online dating became a complete and completely acceptable alternative to meeting someone more traditionally. The reasons for the success of mobile dating apps uh, are quite simple and boil down to what us communication folks call affordances. Now, an affordance is uh, nothing but a characteristic of an object or of a technology that um, induces a certain use among uh, people who use this object or this technology. Um, for example, the fact that a smartphone started having a front camera as well as a back camera can be thought of something that incentivized the selfie. Maybe um, selfies were not really at the center of why uh, such decision was made in, this, in the design of the product, but nonetheless, it's a use that was incentivized. It's an affordance of mobile phones. Affordances are interesting to consider in terms of online dating because platforms that have the exact same um, objectives, such as OkCupid or Tinder, offer, however, very different affordances, which in turn give rise to completely different experiences for users. The main a novelty that's introduced by dating apps is the fact that they are mobile. Uh, this means that prior to uh, apps like Tinder, which basically take place in the privacy of your phone, you would have to um, use online dating on a laptop or a desktop that could be shared with others, could be in a setting like a library, but most importantly, was uh, located in one space and mostly was an activity that took place on its own. Um, um, Mobile-based online dating through an app like Tinder changes this in the sense that um, by being portable, uh, online dating is something that can happen while you're waiting for the train or while you're watching TV. This type of more gamified experience where um, not only users are much more engaged in the physical space because they swipe left or right, but also because the experience is so much more like a game, led um, many observers and especially the media to decide that apps like Tinder or like Grindr were purely hookup apps. So apps that people would use primarily to meet casual, have casual encounters with other people or have relationships that were meant to only last a very short time. Now, my own research has debunked this uh, idea in the sense that we found that there are actually plenty of reasons to use dating apps, but that finding a committed relationship, no matter how long, was still one of the main motivations that people had even to use a hookup app like Tinder. One lens that I find particularly interesting when it comes to the considering the evolution of online dating has to do with the expression of identities. On the other one hand, we have the information we share because, of course, the moment we are on uh, an online dating app, um, we represent ourselves in a way that um, aims to uh, attract a certain type of person and not other types of people. 
Uh, on the other hand, of course, we are also browsing other people's profiles. So we are trying to derive from the information we get an idea of who this other person is. So there are these two sides. And speaking of affordances, um, uh, the way uh, information is handled uh, right now on apps like Tinder compared to the OkCupid of the early 2000s or the early 10s is extremely different. Now, platforms like OkCupid used to be very much based on user information, used to request a lot of private information from users and engage them in additional quizzes that covered controversial topics or um, issues like religion and politics and whatnot. All of this information would be aggregated by the, flat, the platform and um, matched with those of other people so that automatically Uh, users would know which kind of users were most compatible to them. In this sense, OkCupid okay, worked 100% uh, in a matchmaking sense, not very differently from the VHSs we spoke of before. Um, on the other hand, platforms like Tinder are very different. Minimal information is required to join a platform indeed, like Tinder, and the expectation is that users will browse through other people's profiles, which are extremely visual and not very textual at all, and eventually uh, discover more information by clicking on the links that they might provide, such as a Spotify playlist or an Instagram profile. The idea being that uh, Tinder acts more like a catalog than a matchmaker, and the user has to do a lot more of the work of finding out who they're actually dating. The second finding that I find uh, remarkable is not about my research at all, It's actually, it actually comes from a series of studies that have been conducted in the US, in the UK, and in Europe. And it doesn't have to do so much with uh, the choice of a partner, but rather about the composition of couples who have been together already for a long time. And um, the finding is one of increased diversity. The idea being the following, because people who um, uh, use online dating or in general are online, are exposed to people who they don't necessarily, didn't necessarily grow, grow up with or um, are not necessarily friends of friends of, <laughs> um, they are exposed to a larger diversity and therefore they might, if they're interested, uh, engage with people who are less likely to be similar to them. Uh, sev these, these several studies find the same finding, being that um, couples who met online, doesn't matter if through uh, an online dating platform or simply on the internet, are more likely to be uh, more, di more different, more diverse, so are likely to have different levels of education, are likely to have different ethnicities or different religious or cultural backgrounds. And I, I, I find this result absolutely fascinating because um, When considering online dating, we, are, we are, tend to think of it as a very frivolous uh, and kind of a superficial topic. But uh, if it were to turn out that it's having an impact on how our societies are going to look in the next 50 years, it would be extremely cool to see. One obvious question that comes out of uh, all this talk of affordances is whether these different affordances have some sort of effect over whom we end up choosing as a potential or an actual partner. Um, the answer to these many questions is that we don't know yet, that um, we haven't collected enough uh, data for long enough that can, uh, that can put us in the position of comparing, for example, couples who've been together for a decade and met on Tinder Um, with couples who have been together a decade and met on OkCupid okay or in any other uh, more traditional way. We do have two findings that I find really interesting and that I think um, make this work relevant. The first one is mine. Uh, it's a part of the work that I have conducted with my co-authors and that is based on a fake uh, dating app that we constructed for experimental purposes and that basically uh, asked the respondents to go through a series of profiles and select the same people they would select in a real life setting. Uh, we found that there are uh, the same type of preferences that many other uh, dating studies uh, prior to the internet had found out, meaning that our sample of Dutch respondents 
who were both uh, ethnically uh, Dutch and n- Dutch by nationality, suggesting that were, they were mostly Caucasian, were more likely to select Caucasian profiles over other ethnicities. We also found that the respondents who had a higher education seemed to value education more uh, in other people as well, suggesting also here that there is um, a preference for what is called assortative mating, so um, a certain uh, tendency to find partners who are similar with certain characteristics rather than different. Thanks for listening and cheers! (laughs) Thank <laughs> you.